I've been living in Iceland since 2017 and basically ever since I moved here I had people asking me how much money should they save up for their trip to Iceland. And well, even though this is an easy question to answer, in this video I'll at least try to give you a rough idea about some things that you can expect to pay the most amount of money for. First of all, let's take a look at the prices of getting here. And like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, getting here doesn't necessarily have to be expensive and that's especially if you are flying from Europe. Just to look at some examples here, if you are flying here off season, from Germany you can get return tickets for about $200 and only $100 from London. Then if you'll be flying from the east coast of US, you can find tickets for under $500. But these are the prices for May and if you are flying here in the summer, which is the high season, the prices of the tickets can be sometimes much higher. And the cost of the flight tickets will of course be the highest for those traveling from far away, like for example Australia. If you are flying from there, you are looking at paying at least around $1000 for a return ticket. And just to mention some low cost airlines flying to Iceland, you will probably want to check out operators like Icelander, Vizair, EasyJet or uh, Fly Airlines. And I personally use Kiwi.com to find flights and compare prices. And then you can either book your flight there or you can just go straight to the website of the airline and book your ticket there. Alright, so now when you are in Iceland, you will definitely need to rent a car. Because the thing is, you'll most likely have to be driving a long distances to get uh, from point A to point B between attractions. And so having a car here is, in my opinion, very important. And if you don't have a driving license, I just really recommend you to come with someone who has one. Because trust me, you'll thank me later. And before we take a look at the prices, I just want to mention that if you are traveling here during the summer, you will most likely pay a little bit more money for the car. And it is not necessarily because the prices would be that much higher, but because the cheapest cars might be already booked out. And that's something that only happens during the high season. But yeah, let's take a look at month of June, for example, and see what we are working with. All right, and let's just set it for one week. And so here you can see the prices, like for example, four wheel drive for seven days. Uh, 85,000 and then of course you have the small cars which are a bit cheaper and the prices start at around 60,000 Icelandic kronas for seven days. And if you want to save some money on booking your car you can visit my website where you can find a discount code and I mean it is not much but it will help at least a little bit. And some of that money that you save you can use towards the gas cost. Currently, prices of diesel and petrol are similar, sitting around 300 to 320 Icelandic kronas per liter. Thankfully though, the rental cars that you'll find here have generally a very low gas consumption. And it of course depends on what car you have, but I would say no more than 9 liters per 100 kilometers. And so let's count it. Let's say that you are driving the whole ring road and that's around uh, 1300 kilometers. Plus you will probably take some little detours and that will add up, let's say, 200 kilometers extra and so if you have a car that spends uh, yeah 9 liters per 100 kilometers uh, with my calculations you can probably spend around 40,000 Icelandic kronas on gas in total. Now let's take a look at accommodation and here is where things can get very expensive and if you are a sole traveler then spending a night in hostels will probably make the most sense for you. And even though I personally don't really like staying in the hostels, I've tried two of them here in Iceland and one of them in Reykjavik and the other one near Keplavik airport. And honestly, I was very impressed by how clean and quiet they were and also providing a good breakfast. You can find some deals even between 50 to 70 US dollars per night. And I'll try to find a link to these places where I stayed and leave it in the description below so you can check it out later. The downside with hostels in Iceland is, in my opinion, that they are mostly concentrated in bigger towns. And if you look at Iceland, it is like a one big countryside. And so the location of the hostels is sometimes not the most convenient. The second option would be staying in the hotel or a guest house. And as Iceland has a beautiful nature basically everywhere you look, you are often going to find them at some pretty nice locations. Let's for instance take a look at the fjords here and see what we can find. And as you can see, most of the places will cost you at least 150 to 200 US dollars per night. 
A third option is so-called summer houses, which are these secluded holiday wooden cottages, often built in these amazing locations. The downside with these is usually the price, because they are usually starting at $200 and more. On the other hand, if you are traveling in a group and you split the cost, it can be a pretty good deal. The main reason why this is my favorite option is simply because they are usually very cozy places in beautiful locations and with a lot of privacy. And I actually live in one here and I'm renting it on Airbnb during the summer. So if you are planning to visit North Iceland and wanna check it out, I'll leave the link to it in the description below. But definitely hurry up, because the dates for the summer are definitely filling up fast. But if these accommodations are too expensive for you, and trust me, that's absolutely understandable, you can also go camping. And that is either in a tent, in a van, or a car with a rooftop tent. And at some places you can also find these sleeping bag accommodations, which often don't cost very much. In my honest opinion, renting a van can be a great option. And even though they are more expensive to rent than regular cars, it can help you to save a lot of money on accommodation. And the campsites are usually well equipped and only cost about 10 to 30 dollars per night. And I happen to have a discount code for a van rental on my website as well, so definitely check that out. Now let's take a look at the prices of the food. The most expensive option will be of course going to the restaurants and you can expect to pay, I don't know, around 30 to 50 dollars per meal uh, in like a casual dining restaurant. Less expensive option is to simply go in grocery shopping, but groceries aren't cheap here either, as you can see on this list here, but it will be still much cheaper than going out for a meal two times a day. And I think that if you're traveling solo and you'll be spending here around seven days, then you can probably expect to pay some 150 to 200 dollars for groceries. Another part of your trip to Iceland where you can spend a lot of money are the activities. And here it will really depend on what you will want to do, but let me just give you some examples of the most popular activities and prices that you might expect to pay. So if you decide to go whale watching, for example, that will cost you between 100 and 170 dollars per person. Another popular one is glacier hiking, for example, in south of Iceland, with prices around 100 to 150 dollars per person. And how about rafting on a beautiful Icelandic river? Well, here you can expect to pay between 120 to 200 dollars. And trust me, there are so many interesting activities here in Iceland and there is really no ceiling to how much you can spend for it. And let me also mention a Blue Lagoon ticket here, which will cost you at least 100 dollars. And that's actually one of the reasons I'm often having a hard time recommending it. And so let's just say for example that you'll decide to book a Blue Lagoon plus other free activities, which all together should set you back some $500. And before we summarize everything, I also want to mention that you should probably budget for any extra expenses. Like for example admission fees to the pools, museums, parking fees and other things like stops at the cafes, buying alcohol, gifts and so on. And so just for this alone, I would put aside at least $150-$200. And so here you can see that how much you will spend on your trip really depends on how you decide to approach it. And if you take a moment to browse through some online forums like Reddit, you will see that people are spending anywhere from as little as a few hundred dollars all the way to thousands of dollars. And so personally what I would do is to just go through all the things that I spoke about in this video Maybe write it down, uh, think about what you actually want to do in Iceland and uh, what you want your dream trip in Iceland to be like. And yeah, this just this should give you a pretty good idea of uh, how much you will spend for your trip. And once you are done calculating the cost for your trip, you can check out this video right here for some travel inspiration.